Okay, hello. Uh, good day once again to all of you. Now we are going to continue our discussion on the um, drug resist resistant TB treatment. And we will start our discussion on um, now treatment monitoring. So previously, we have discussed about um, how to educate, give counsel, and support our patients prior to treatment. We also discussed um, what are the pre-treatment evaluations that should be um, done to our patients before they actually be started on the treatment. And we also knew of the regimens that can be given for an MDR-TB. We have the SSOR, um, we have the SLOR, um, fluoroquinolone susceptible, we have um, SLOR, fluoroquinolone resistant, and we have the individualized treatment regimen. And um, you have also discussed about um, the initiation of treatment and um, what are the parameters that needs to be um, noted during the entire duration of the treatment. So now we proceed with um, treatment monitoring. So for the treatment monitoring, um, it is important that we have proper reporting and recording of the um, successful intake of the daily dose of the medication. So um, later on, during our lecture on the reporting and recording, you will be able to see the reporting forms and the recording forms and how to properly uh, enter this um, monitoring data. So for the treatment monitoring, we do clinical evaluation. We, we do microbiological um, investigation and, labor, uh, and laboratory investigation as per schedule. So um, during monitoring of treatment by our DRTB patients, what should we look into? So first, uh, the same as um, DSTB, we always look into the general, general well-being of our patients. Are they gaining weight? And for children, we will also look into um, uh, the height. No? Um, we also will evaluate the height because there are medicines in the DRTB treatment that has effects on uh, bone marrow. So may mga um, drugs that... Um, results to bone marrow suppression, so it may um, also affect um, some of the um, ano ba, yung mga um, vital um, growth growth indicators in our patients, especially of the children. And of course, um, look into the resolution of symptoms. If it has improved, it's the same, or it 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 um, went um, bad. And also, always mental health screening since we always want to ensure that we are constantly um, supporting our patient and we are um, constantly providing such psychosocial assistance. And again, um, as we have mentioned uh, in our last um, lecture, na it is important to always give counseling before two weeks after initiation of treatment and monthly thereafter during the follow-up. So kahit konti-konti lang ng mga counseling advice. Don't, kung ano, huwag nyo rin i-overwhelm yung patient. Okay. And um, I also, this is the perfect time to identify occurrence of any adverse drug events. No, like for example, you, you always ask the patient, oh, how are you? How, are, how is your body reacting to the drug? How are you feeling when you take the drug? Um, you, you ask this, these questions. And um, para um, sabihin sa'yo ni patient, no, kung ano yung nararamdaman niya. Or you can, you can ask um, direct questions. Like, for example, are you feeling uh, nauseous or are you vomiting? Para directed towards um, certain drugs na pwede rin ganun. Kasi paminsan si patient, hindi niya, hindi niya masabi, effect kaya ito ng drug? Or, for example, pag nagkaroon siya ng allergic reaction, baka isipin niya because of the food that he ate, pero hindi mo palalam sa drug. So, you can um, ask leading questions naman. If, for example, wala talagang sinasabi si patient. And once na may sinabi siya, we have to um, dig on it deeper and prompt and appropriate management should be given. So, we will have a separate discussion on how to manage um, adverse drug events. 
kasi medyo mahaba-haba siya. So, it will be a separate discussion. I think that would be for next week. Okay. And then, we have to remind the patient. So, this since um, this happens on a monthly basis, yung monitoring, so we have to um, remind the patient to dis submit sputum specimen and have all um, the other laboratory examinations done according to schedule. Okay. So, this table will show you the different schedule of the baseline and follow-up clinical, laboratory, and bacteriologic examination for patients on our Regimen 3 or SSOR. So, this um, BL means baseline. Then, itong M1 to M9, month 1, month 2, month 3, yan siya. The M1 to M4 is the intensive phase, 4 months, of the SSOR. This may be extended to six months. Later on, we will you will know um, kung kailan po may extend yung intensive phase for SSOR. And then M5 to M9 is the continuation phase, five months of the SSOR. And then we have post-treatment follow-up at six months and at 12 months. Okay. For the clinical evaluation by the PMDT physician, so yung mga physicians po natin, um, what will, um, what parameters should, uh, kailan po ba siya dapat sin-check? So kung pansin nyo, lahat po nung may check, yan yung frequency ng pag -e evaluate ng patients clinically. So from baseline and monthly thereafter. So kailangan hindi yun ma-miss na in-evaluate. Second, microbiologic test. So, we have smear microscopy, TB culture, drug susceptibility testing, and first line and second line probe assay. So, for smear microscopy, it is done, all of these, all of these four microbiological tests are done during baseline, no? Baselining. And smear microscopy and TB culture, ginagawa po siya monthly. So, monthly po ang follow-up nito all throughout the treatment. While DST and line probase is done only at baseline, and then if culture remains positive at fourth month, so kasi since monthly yung culture, diba? so if after the intensive phase, the culture remains positive um, during the uh, treatment, or in case of culture reversion, like for example, negative na siya sa month one, negative na sa month two and three, at the fourth month, nag-positive ulit. That's what you call the reversion. Or, during the post-treatment follow-up at six months or at 12 months, nag-positive ulit. So, um, pwede, pwede tayong mag-test mag ulit for DST or LPA. Okay. So, what are their tests? No? Ito naman, diagnostic test. So, we have here chest x-ray, ECG, visual acuity, BPNS, yung peripheral neuropathy screening natin, and mental health screening. So, at baseline, these are all taken. And for x-ray, it is every six months. So, every six months siya. And then, for ECG, it is monthly. Because we have um, a couple of drugs who who has an effect on um, heart conduction. Visual acuity and color vision. So, ayan. Monthly din po siya. So, we can use yung uh, Ishigawa, uh, Ishihara, Ishihara test on, and as other, um, yung Snellens chart. So, pwede natin gamitin yun. And then, BPNS. Ayan. We ask this during the first, during the intensive phase only. And then, mental health screening um, at baseline. Pero if, for example, the patient, may, may cyclosarin yung patient sa kanyang um, regimen, then we, we monitor on this monthly because cyclosarin is number one drug that may cause um, um, ano nga yan, oh? um, problems or, sy or um, psych psychological problems to our patients. So, Okay, so what else? So we have also blood chemistry tests, no hematology test. So ayan, ito yung liver liver panel natin. So it has to be dahil nga sa sobrang daming drugs na iniinom niya, so that has to be monitored monthly. And CBC at baseline, but if the the regimen contains linezolid, so that has to be checked monthly as well. And then um, you have for the BUN CREA, FBS, um, TSH, so every six months. Uh, and then HIV rapid at baseline only, pregnancy test at baseline. Okay. 
So, if during the monthly examination for AST and ALT, yung ating liver panel test, if the result is higher than upper limit of normal value, then we consider doing total bilirubin test. So, ito naman yung schedule of baseline and follow-up clinical laboratory and bacteriologic examinations for patients on 18 to 20 months of SLOR and ITR. So, both SLOR, FQS, and FQR na po ito, and ITR. So, intensive phase is 6 months and then continuation phase 12 and can be extended to 14 months. And then we have post-treatment follow-up at 6 months and at 12 months. So clinical evaluation, it has to be done all throughout, every month po parate. And again, it includes weight, height, and um, symptoms of the patient. Okay. For the microbiologic test, again, um, for smear microscopy, it is done all throughout monthly until post-treatment follow-up. However, for TB culture, it is only done monthly until the end of the intensive phase on six months. And then during the continuation phase, every other month na lang siya. And then you have the post-treatment follow-up for six months and 12 months. The same with for DST and LPA, you get it at baseline. And then the same premise goes na if there is um, culture reversion um, during the post-treatment follow-up or um, the, the culture remains to be positive but the fourth month of treatment, then we can repeat the ST and LPA as needed. For diagnostic test, so same pa din, um, uh, the chest x-ray will be done every six months. Okay. For ECG, um, it is taken as at baseline and if the monthly, if the um, regimen contains bedacrylin, delamanid, clofacidine, and or moxifloxacin. So these are QT prolonging drugs. So, kaya, like, kailangan bantayan natin yung ECG. And then, visual acuity and color vision. So, the same as earlier, um, linezolid, if kasama. And ngayon, may, may additional lang ethambutol. Um, kasi we can already consider um, using this pag nag-slore tayo or nag-ITR. Kasi, di ba, we, we decide on the, the um, regimen of the patient when we do the ITR. For BPMS, um, baseline and then monthly if regimen contains linezolid, cycloserine, and or high dose isoniazid. So ito naman yung drugs that are, um, ito yung culprit, culprit drugs for um, peripheral neuropathy. Okay. For audiometry naman, we always take it at baseline and then if we use um, aminoglycosides such as amikacin or streptomycin, which is the culprit drug for um, hearing loss, so it has audiometry has to be done monthly. For mental health screening, we take it again at baseline and then monthly if the patient um, regimen contains um, cyclosidine. For blood chem and hematology exam, so we have again um, the same lang kanina no um, baseline baseline po lahat um, and i de design na lang natin yung testing niya according to depende sa um, regimen ng patient. Okay. Ano pa ba yung hindi ko na mention kanina? Ayun. For TH, TSH or thyroid simulating hormone, we take it at baseline and then every 6 months if regimen contains proteonamide or para amino salicylic acid or yung paser. Every 3 months naman if regimen contains both. So dapat mas frequent um, na yung pag-check mo ng TSH if both yung ginamit. And um, albumin, um, we take it if delamanid is um, in the regimen. Albumin. Okay. HIV and pregnancy, pregnancy test only during baseline. Okay. So na-mention na rin natin to kanina, no? if liver panel tests are above normal levels, then we request for total bilirubin. And then if the regimen contains pedacrylin and delamanid and or moxifloxacin or clofazimine, then all the more, kailangan mas, mas frequent yung ating ECG monitoring. Pwedeng every other week for the initial three months is recommended because again, these drugs are um, QT prolonging drugs. So pag isinabay pa natin sila sa isang regimen, then we have to frequently monitor for any QT uh, prolongation. 
and then adjust treatment accordingly if, for example, we are seeing um, toxicity or mga changes in um, QT levels. Okay. So, how do we know kung, um, kung red flag na siya, kung kailangan na siyang stop, kung kailangan i-consider to um, refer to the TVMAC or to a specialist? So, ito yung mga red flags na titingnan natin sa mga examination results. Okay, pwedeng during initial pa lang or at baseline or pwedeng during the monthly uh, monitoring. So first, ano ba yung titignan natin sa x-ray? So if we see, kasi we do this every six months, diba? if we see that the size of the lesion is increasing and then we are seeing new lesions, um, kasi dapat kino-compare natin yung x-ray result from baseline and then every six months. So dapat you have a copy of it. You, you keep records really of the patient because by the time na kailangan siyang i-refer sa TBMAC, the, the doctors will have to look into those results from the baseline. So, titingnan yung increasing size of lesion, there are new lesions na nakikita, and if there are um, development of pleural effusions. For 12 the ECG naman, yun, sinicheck natin for the QT um, prolongation. So, if it's more than 500 milliseconds or more than 60 milliseconds from baseline. Okay. Color, visual, uh, color vision and visual acuity. Now, we, we, we check for blindness um, baseline. Um, uh, we, we make sure that we don't forget this kasi, or we don't skip no, in, in determining this because sometimes in the middle of the treatment, yung, yung patient mo magre-reklamo na bakit hindi na siya nakakita or blur, hindi na siya kabasa. And then, if you didn't do this, baka kasi yung problem ni patient sa vision niya is andoon na even before the start of the treatment. So ngayon, without you, without that evidence, then talagang magiging culprit yung anti-TB drugs. So, important ito. So we know if there is gradual um, polar blindness or the, um, problems in vision or progressive ba siya or the patient is just doing fine. So, yung progressive blurring of vision naman, um, we, we try to check if it can be corrected by error of refraction, by um, having eyeglasses or um, referral to ophthalmologist. But if it really persists despite the, the measures taken, then we might have to change the drugs eventually. For the liver panel and for bilirubin, AST, LT, and bilirubin, if this is five times the upper limit of normal, or three times the upper limit normal with clinical manifestations na yun, ano? Or with bilirubin or more than or equal to 1.5 um, times over the upper limit na normal. Okay, for potassium. So, it has to be, titingnan nyo, kung less than 3 millimoles per liter um, na yung potassium levels. Uh, because this has, be correct, this has to be corrected with um, uh, correlated with your serum, calcium, and magnesium as well. For CBC, you have to look into the hemoglobin, the platelet, WBC. For the WBC, you compute for the absolute neutrophil count. So, dapat po ang ANC niya is less than 1,000. So, how do you compute for the ANC? If... Uh, you, you follow this formula, percent of neutrophils plus percent of bands times WBC over 100. So lahat po itong parameters na ito, makikita naman natin ito sa WBC, uh, uh, CBC result. For creatinine clearance, um, creatinine in um, BUN, if less than 30 ml per minute. So... Um, may meron ding um, formula to. You can actually download an app para hindi kayo mahirapan to um, compute for this. Okay. okay, so now, um, yun na yung mga kailangan nating i-monitor for clinical, bacteriologic, and um, laboratory. So now, you weigh the patient monthly. No? Same pa rin sa DSTD na when you weigh the patient and bumibigat na siya, then you have to adjust the dosage of your medications based on weight. Like for example, di ba yung kanina, yung last time, 
may yung weight band natin, 30 to 35, and then 36 to 40. So, for example, the patient is, is 35 kilos ngayon. And then, the next two months, the patient is already 37 kilos. Then, yung adjustment yun ng medications has to be um, adjusted as well. Doon na siya sa tataasan na natin yung message. And then, if the same din ang reverse. Kung gumagaan si patient, pumapayat, so i-adjust din natin kasi mas magiging toxic sa kanya if we still continue to use the higher dosage. Or if we continue to use a lower dosage sa kanyang body weight, then the drug may not be effective in treating the disease. Okay. So, as you go along, every monthly na magkikita kayo ng pasyente, it is, don't forget to appreciate and to give positive feed feedback on the patient's treatment. Like, for example, simple, oh, ma'am, magandang, uh, magandang balita kasi ngayon, no, or sa, sa tatlong months na pagtitake natin ng mga gamot na to, um, nag, uh, nadagdagan na po ang timbang nyo from ng tatlong kilo, sabihin natin, o tumataba ng suminig, so maaring makapagsabi ito na um, gumagana ang mga medisina na iniinom nyo or umaayos ang inyong lagay. So, para naman si patient will be um, all the more compliant to the treatment regimen. And parang hindi niya isipin, especially if these are patients who are constantly um, battling with adverse reactions or adverse events. So, para naman ma maganahan sila or ma magkaroon sila ng hope na, okay, um, I, I can, kaya ko pang i-endure to, kaya may magawa naman ng paraan, kaya naman i-address, basta gumaling lang ako and I may nakikita ako changes in my body. So, um, that will give a boost no, to your patient. So, um, wag po natin kalimutan yung mga, and also, pwede din kayong mag, 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 um, uh, you congratulate the patient na, o oh, ma'am, parang uh, three months na tayo, parang two months na lang, matatapos na yung intensive phase, and then we'll go to the continuation phase. So, meaning, pag nag-continuation phase tayo, ma'am, magbabawasan yung gamot niyo. So, um, ituloy-tuloy lang natin, ma'am, para gumaling kayo. So, yung mga ganyan, yung doon tayo tumingin sa sa bright side of of things. Yeah. But, syempre, hindi naman natin kailangan i-ignore yung mga totoong nararamdaman ma adverse reactions ng patients. We will recognize that as well. Okay. So, um, also, ayun, pag may inexpress na adverse events si patient, then make sure that it has to be reported to the PVIMS, yung online natin, or if not available, we can use the FDA suspected adverse reaction form. So, don't forget about it. And of course, refer the patient to a specialist to uh, or to the hospital or sa TV map. Yeah. So, for those patients who cannot tolerate any of the drugs, no, may mga patients kasi talaga na um, nagde-develop ng hearing loss, nagkakaroon ng intolerable pain to amikasin, no, since it's injectable, and may iba has persistent vomiting due to the passer, no. So, consider, we can consider modification of their treatment. And that has to be discussed with the TBMAC if it is necessary to replace more than one drug. Okay. Pag one drug lang lang yung i-replace nyo, you can actually do it. May guide tayo mamaya kung ano ba dapat ang i-replace pag ito ang hindi pwede. Pero kapag more than one drug na po ang i-replace nyo sa kanyang regimen, then you have to consult the regional TBMAC. Okay. Yan. So, and then we decide whether we shift to continuation phase for SSOR based on spitu microscopy or we extend um, a little bit more yung months niya for the intensive phase. So, ito yung magiging guide natin. Yung mini-mention ko sa part 1 ng lecture natin, no, na bakit yung nakalagay sa SSOR, um, intensive phase, 4 to 6 months, may, may ganong option. It's because of this, no? So, this is the transition from intensive phase to continuation phase for patients on SSOR. So, for example, um, di ba monthly yung smear result? Um, let us take note of the result of the smear for on the fourth month. If it turns out negative, 
Then we can now discontinue the isoniazid high dose and the proteonamide. And you can proceed to the continuation phase of the treatment. So meaning, yung intensive phase niya hanggang fourth month na lang because nagkaroon na ng conversion from positive to negative on smear. Now, if the patient is still positive at fourth month, you then extend the intensive phase by one month. So magiging five months na intensive phase. And then you take another smear microscopy test. If negative, then you discontinue isoniazid, high dose, and you con and proteonamide and proceed with continuation phase. However, if the smear is still positive on the fifth month, then you extend one more month. So, magiging six months na ngayon ang intensive phase niya. Pag negative na siya on the six months of the smear result, then you discontinue isoniazid high dose and proteonamide and you can proceed to continuation phase. However, if at the end of six months, kasi hanggang six months lang tayo, binigay nating leeway, di ba, for intensive phase, if positive pa rin, then that case has to be discussed with TPMAC. Okay? And then, also, whether it's positive or negative, we now discontinue the BDQ, pedaquiline. Because again, pedaquiline should only be given for a period of six months. If it has to be prolonged, no more than six months or more more than six months, then it has to be um, it has to follow yung off label use. Kailangan humingi na ng consent and then it has to be discussed at tibima. So ganon siya. Okay. So balikan natin ano? Ayun, ito na yung siya sabi ko. Um, ito yung regimen and then you have four to six months of intensive phase. So kung at Fourth month negative na siya kaagad, so you discontinue, um, you discontinue high dose isoniazid and you discontinue um, proteonamide and you proceed with the five months of treatment. However, kung positive positive na umabot na yung until yung kung yung max natin na six months positive pa rin, then you stop this immediately and you stop and you refer the case to TB. So, you now collect um, ayun, um, collect one sputum sample from patients. No? Kung, for example, talagang positive pa rin siya at the six month, um, you collect one sputum sample from the patient or pwede tayong guma gumamit ng isolate from the latest um, positive culture if there is no culture conversion at month four of treatment or if there is culture reversion. So, if there is, na, nakita natin, if there is any drug-resistant amplification detected sa repeat drug-resistant niya, DST, then we declare the case as failure. When failure is declared or in any other situation, when failure is suspected, we <clears throat> consult the TBMAC for the possible causes and we can manage the patient. Baka siguro kailangan mag-individualized treatment na siya. So again, no, do adherence counseling. Okay. So ito naman, no, ito ay very crucial. Um, if the patient, for example, on the monthly pag-visit, pag-visit niya, nakita, kita niyo that the patient is interrupting treatment. Hindi, may mga missed doses. So, you immediately take, make a phone call. Di ba? Ang, ang sabi nga natin, every two weeks tayong kukumusta sa pasyente or yung treatment partner every two weeks na ma, makikikumusta sa patient. However, kung for example, nakikita na natin that the patient is missing the doses, tapos wala pang two weeks, huwag na natin hintayin yung two weeks. Kapag may nakita na tayong one missing dose na hindi na take ni patient, we immediately make a phone call. And then ask the patient paano, bakit, bakit hindi na take, and then reinforce no yung treatment adherence. And then if um missed na three doses consecutive. So wag na nating mag-phone call. We do a follow-up in person or we do a home visit. Um pwede ang treatment partner plus the STC nurse can make a, a, a home visit to the patient to really know or discuss with the family and the patient ano yung naging problem. 
um, bakit ganito kaaga? No? One dose lang, three dose lang. Um, ganito na yung action natin. It's because we really don't want um, these patients to um, be missing more of their doses. Kasi paminsan, kapag pahabain natin ng five days, ng one week, baka aabot na ng months, hindi na natin makita si patient. Baganda yung as early as as early pa lang na nakikita natin hindi na sila nag adhere sa treatment, we can already make um, adjustments or we can already make um, um, ano ba, parang treatment plan na, or changes in the treatment plan for the patient. So, if the patient finishes naman his or her treatment, then of course, um, we let us not forget to also congratulate and appreciate the, the efforts of the patient, also the family members. And with proper instructions na the patient will follow up every six months for the next year. Para ito na yung mga siya sa meeting post-treatment follow-up. And then, we now record and update the necessary forms. Okay. So, as I said earlier, this will be a separate discussion kasi medyo madami-dami ito. <laughs> Madami-daming drugs ang kailangan natin i-discuss for this. So, this will be a discussion for next week. So, we proceed now with the modification of treatment regimen. Ayun siya sabi ko. Kailan ba, uh, ano bang drugs ang pwedeng ipampalit o ipang-replace doon sa mga drugs na hindi matolerate ng patient? Okay. So, ito yung recommended replacement for anti-TB drugs in case of toxicity or intolerance for any of the SSOR drugs. Okay. So, we, sa first column, ito yung SSOR drug. Uh, second column is the recommended replacement and yung remarks or yung gano, anong kailangan na additional pa na mga info that we need to know. So, the modification of the treatment regimen can be done if an anti-TB drug needs to be replaced due to intolerance or toxicity. Um, Kung baga, you, you already did all of the measures um, na para to prevent no, further intolerance. Like, for example, if the patient's is um, if is experiencing um, vomiting or nausea when taking um, protionamide or paser, th then siguro pwede tayong magsabi na, okay, um, take ice chips before or take metoclopramide. But even giving those symptomatic drugs, if still the patient cannot tolerate it and it is already leading to a negative consequence to the patient. Like for example, um, for example, yung peripheral neuropathy, sobrang severe na that it is already causing permanent disability or yung hearing loss or yung vision. And next is life-threatening conditions like mga heart um, ECG changes, baka uh, may mga um, it will predispose the patient to have parang mga cardiac problems, arrhythmias, or death, no or loss to follow up. For example, si patient hindi natin siya shift kahit nagsasuffer na si patient. So, hindi na lang siya mag adhere to treatment. Kumbaga, he will miss all of those dosage, which is, yun yung pinakaayaw natin mangyari. Then, we can modify the treatment regimen. Okay, so, we'll start with BDQ. Um, since BDQ is one of our really core, uh, important core drug, no? It has a high bactericidal activity and sterilizing activity. Kaya na siya group A siya, no? So, hindi siya actually recommended to be replaced. So, we do, by all means, um, try to retain it. But, if yung na sinabi ko, if andyan na yung mga negative consequence, then you can consult with the regional TB MAC and the regional TB MAC may need to shift to an individualized treatment regimen for this for SSOR. Okay? So for levofloxacin, again, since core drug din po siya, not recommended to replace and consult to TBMAC for an baka needed din ng individualized treatment regimen. Okay. For clovazimine, we can um, we can replace it with cyclosine as first option. Kasi clofazimine and cyclosine belong to group B um, drugs. Uh, ano nga yan? Companion drugs. So, medyo same sila ng level of um, activity, bacterial and sterilizing activity. So, 
give cyclosurin um, and then linezolid na lang as a second option. So unahin muna natin si cyclosurin. So you can give cyclosurin or linezolid in replacement for clofacimine for the entire treatment of dur treatment duration. But if nangyari yung intolerance or yung toxicity after na nung intensive phase, so either after four months or after six months, then you can continue BDQ for entire duration with up, without replacement with cyclosurine or linezolid. Okay? So meaning, we will now, um, if and then if the patient has underlying seizure or mental health condition, we prefer linezolid over cyclosurine. Okay? And if my underlying condition of psychosis or depression or seizure is uncontrolled, we also we avoid um, cyclosurine in this case. So linezolid tayo, second option tayo. Other drugs, we have proteonamide, PTO. So, cyclosurine pa rin as the first option. Second option is linezolid. So, we have to quickly shift proteonamide to either of the two, cyclosurine or linezolid, if splitting the dose for two weeks did not prevent vomiting. Okay. Or tolerance to PTO did not improve. Diba ang sabi natin kanina sa dosage, if more than 250 milligrams ang kailangan ibigay sa patient na protonamide, para slowly na matorelate niya, you can give two divided doses in the morning and in the afternoon for the first two weeks. And then if kaya nang matolerate ni patient, hindi na siya masyadong nagsusuka or nauseous, then we can give the dose once daily na after two weeks. Pero if even this uh, regimen, treatment regimen, if the patient is still not tolerated and PETO is not still not tolerated, then I think we have to shift shift the regimen to either cyclosurine or linezolid. Okay. So give cyclosurine or linezolid for four to six months. So give it in the intensive phase. If patient, again, because cyclosurine is our culprit drug for mga um, psycho, uh, psycho, psychosis or mga uh, problems on the mental health well-being of the patient, then we will, linezolid is preferred over cyclosolid. For pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and high-dose isoniazid, wala pong recommended na replacement and um, there is no need to replace these drugs. So, ang paalang naman dito is if modification requires replacement of or premature discontinuation of more than or equal to two drugs or complete discontinuation of SSOR to shift to an individualized treatment regimen, it all has to be in consultation with the PD now. Okay. Now, how do we, what are the recommended replacement naman of anti-TB drug in case of toxicity or intolerance for the slur? So either ito, no, both of the fluoroquinolone susceptible and fluoroquinolone resistant. Okay. For levofloxacin, BDQ, and linezolid, the lamanid is the first, first option as drug replacement. If there is a need to stop linezolid when BDQ has already been stopped, then we replace linezolid with cyclosurine, except in peripheral neuropathy. For clofacimine, cyclosurine is our first option. That is, if yung cyclosurine has never been used before. Okay. Paser naman, protonamide, ethambutol, pyrazinamide, either of these four can be the second option. And paser or protonamide can be used if it has never been used before. We use ethambutol and pyrazinamide again if my evidence of susceptibility 
by drug susceptibility test. Okay. Again, last resort natin, ano, um, imipenem, silastatin, or amikacin, or streptomycin. So, gagamitin lang natin to, yung ating um, aminoglycosides, if may evidence din tayo of susceptibility sa um, ano nga yan, drug susceptibility test. For cycloserine, so, ito naman ang mga options. Paser, PTO, um, ethambutol, and pyrazinamide. So, if all of these, because these are ano, oral anti-TB drugs, if this cannot be tolerated or if hindi talaga din siya pwedeng magamit because of certain conditions, then that's the time na tayo mag-introduce ng injectable drugs. We can consider imipinem, silastatin, or the aminoglycosides. Again, if, if with evidence of susceptibility. So how do we now define the treatment outcomes for DRTB? So we have the following definition. So we do this no after the completion of treatment, after the um, continuation phase, and if the patient and we now discharge the patient from the program. So this is the treatment outcome definitions for SSOR. Okay, so for SSOR, we can um, assign the patient the outcome as cured if the patient with bacteriologically confirmed, no, meaning that my expert evidence that the patient is um, rifampicin resistant or my MDRTB has completed the treatment based on the guidelines that we had earlier, doon, it's either yung 9-month treatment or yung 11-month treatment. Without evidence of failure and with three or more consecutive cultures taken at least 30 days apart, negative after the intensive phase. So, si patient na on SSOR, cured siya if again, bacteriologically confirmed. So, meaning, yung mga, may mga CD patients kasi na MDR, hindi lang din ito sa DSTB. May mga, may mga CD patients clinically diagnosed lang and under, and are um, using the MDR regimen. So, hindi sila pwede sa cure, sa cured na outcome. This is only for the bacteriologically confirmed. So, may expert testing prior. And then, um, in walang evidence of failure, no, and then, um, sa, con sa continuation phase niya, meron siyang three or more consecutive TB culture um, at least one month apart na negative ang result. So, meaning walang culture reversion in the continuation phase. Okay. So, treatment completed. This is the outcome naman um, if um, the patient has no evidence of failure. Again, natapos niya yung treatment na recommended ng um, program without evidence of failure, but wala tayong record ng three or more consecutive cultures taken after the intensive phase. For example, um, hindi, hindi nagkaroon ng three consecutive for example, every other month lang siya merong result kasi hindi nga siya nakakapag-submit ng sputum, di ba? Every month. So, hindi natin siya, hindi natin ma-assign ma siya ng cure kasi we have no record of the three or more consecutive cultures. Pag sinabi natin consecutive, dapat sunod-sunod po. Okay. Okay, for treatment, failed. So, any of the following. Pag sinabing failed, um, it can be any of the following, no? So, treatment terminated or need for permanent regimen change. So, like, for example, yung kanina na if at the six month of sputum microscopy positive pa rin siya, then ni-refer natin sa TBMAC and kailangan niya nang mag-shift to an individualized treatment regimen. Then, failed po siya sa SSOR. Lack of evidence of at least two consecutive negative cultures. 
by the end of an extended intensive phase of the shorter regimen. So, for example, di ba in at the fourth month, at the fourth month, no, um, nag nag positive siya. So we have to extend the treatment for another month, di ba? Five months, and then sputum ka ulit. And then if um, positive ulit, we can extend again for six months. So, dapat within that six months, walang um, walang evidence of um, positive culture during the intensive phase of the shorter regimen. So, for the positive um, sputum smear, failed then if nag-positive pa rin siya after the, uh, more than six months of treatment. And it has to be confirmed by two consecutive samples. So, ano po itong culture reversion? So, when we say culture reversion, um, may culture reversion to positive, no? Um, kung baga, nag-negative na si patient sa culture na and then nagkaroon ito ng um, positive during the continuation phase. So, for example, on the fourth month of the intensive phase, the patient had already an initial conversion negative. Then And then, after the monthly um, culture testing, two consecutive cultures taken at least one month apart, may nakitaan that the patient had a positive culture during the continuation phase. So that is culture reversion. Okay, nag-negative na siya during the intensive phase and then pagpasok ng continuation phase, nagkaroon siya ng positive. So, failed yun ang treatment na yun. Evidence of additional acquired resistance to fluoroquinolone or second line injectables. Yeah. So, sa mga DST testing niya, nagkaroon pa ng additional resistance. Adverse drug reaction res resulting to switching to a new regimen. Ayun. Meaning intractable ADRs na hindi talaga makontrol unless na baguhin ang treatment regimen ng patient. So halos lahat no, ng nasa field, any situation that may result to changing of the entire SSOR regimen. Kumbaga, hindi lang tayo nagre-replace ng drug, kumbaga, nag-change na yung buong regimen ng SSOR. Then we um, tag or assign that as um, failed. Okay. So diet. Um, any patient who dies for any reason during the course of treatment. So if an NDRPTB patient dies um, during the course of treatment, whether or not it is related to the TB or other causes, then itatag po natin as type. For loss to follow up, so if a patient has received the SSOR for more than a month and returns for treatment after an interruption of two consecutive months or more, he is not restarted on the SSOR, but on a longer MTB, MDRTB regimen, which is individualized based on the medicines most likely to still be effective. However, if the interruption is less than two months, for example, may mga medical indication in case of adverse events or patient's decision, then the SSOR can be continued and missed doses added to the rest of the treatment. So, masasabi nating loss to follow up si patient na to if nagkaroon ng interruption for more than or equal to two consecutive months. So, may dalawang reason. No? Yung isa, talagang um, uh, more uh, due to patient's interruption, no? and more than two months, yun yung kailangan na natin gawa ng individualized regimen. Pero kung hindi naman umabot ng two months, less than two months lang, then we can, SSOR regimen can still be continued and ma-prolong na lang uh, based on the missed doses. For not evaluated, 
these are patients whom treatment outcomes are not assigned. So yung mga patients natin na na-transfer out to other facilities, um, sa another treatment unit, or yung mga treatment outcome na other. So ito naman ang treatment outcome definition for SLOR, both for um, FQ susceptible and FQ resistant and the individualized treatment regimen. So, kailan natin masasabing cure? So, cured is treatment completed, meaning natapos yung buong uh, months of regimen for intensive and continuation phase, and mayroon taayong three or more consecutive cultures taken at least one month apart na negative no, ang result after the eight months of treatment for slower or after the intensive phase for ITR with second line injectables. Okay. For treatment completed naman, the treatment completed is no evidence of failure, pero again, wala tayong record of the three or more consecutive cultures taken one month apart na negative during the eight months of treatment for slower and or during the intensive phase for ITR with second line injectables. So, kailan naman natin masasabing failed yung regimen for slower and ITR? So, treatment terminated or need for permanent regimen change of at least two anti-TB drugs because of a lack of conversion. By the end, Sa end of eight month of treatment of the patient, positive pa rin ang kanyang culture. So, um, wala tayong nakikita ang conversion. Pag sinabi nating culture conversion, no, ang meaning nito is from positive, nag-negative na. Meaning, nag-convert na si patient. For example, sa baseline, positive because yun nga, na-diagnose siya. And then after um, continuing the treatment, undergoing the treatment for three months, four months, the, the, the culture of the patient converted already to negative. So that is how we term culture conversion. So kailan ba natin masasabi to? It is two consecutive cultures taken at least one month apart are found to be negative. And the specimen collection date of the first culture is taken as culture conversion date. So, second, kailan ba na nag-fail? Pag nagkaroon ng bacteriological reversion. Ayan. So, ito naman yung opposite ng conversion. Kung ang culture conversion from posi uh, positive to negative after two consecutive cultures taken one month apart, yung reversion naman is after an initial conversion, kung baga, positive siya nag-negative na siya initially. However, sa next two consecutive cultures niya, take, taken one month apart, nag, nakitaan ito ng positive um, result. So, kumbaga, nag-revert back siya sa positive um, result. So, um, we only consider culture reversion when it occurs after eight months of treatment. Okay. So, there is also evidence of additional acquired resistance to fluoroquinolones and other SLIs. And ADRs that needed to completely stop that RR treatment. Okay. So, failed. Okay, same ang definition natin sa death, no? Sa died. Um, for loss to follow up, um, same pa rin tayo, um, two months ang ating um, cut-off. If more than two months, interruption. Two consecutive months, interruption, then loss to follow-up si patient. Then we have the same um, definition for not evaluated. Okay. So now, after um, completion of treatment and if patient is already discharged from the program, we ensure that we assign appropriate treatment outcomes for the RTB patients based on definitions. Yun na nga, nabanggit natin kanina, no? 
Uh, basta wag lang kayong mamalito sa uh, definition ng treatment outcome for SSOR and uh, treatment outcome for SLOR and IPR. Okay. So, we record the treatment outcome in our appropriate forms and meron po tayong ini-issue na certificate of treatment completion. And we just advise the patient on the post-treatment follow-up 6 months and 12 months. So now we proceed with the post treatment follow up. So ano kailan ba yun, no? So after the um, this is 6 months after the completion of the treatment regimen and 12 months thereafter. So this is doon naman syempre magpo post treatment follow up ka doon sa mga na assign natin as cured and completed. Hindi tayo magpo post treatment sa mga nag-failed kasi definitely yung mga nag-failed has to undergo another treatment regimen na mas angkop doon sa kanilang situation. So ano yung mga kailangang procedures na i-include natin sa post-treatment follow-up? So again, hindi pa rin ito dapat ma-miss clinical evaluation of the TB signs and symptoms. Balik-balikan talaga natin yan. Weight, resumption of symptoms, ganyan. Chest X-ray also, and then BSSM and culture test. So, yan po ang mga papagawa natin during the post-treatment follow-up at 6 months and at 12 months. Okay. So, may mga outcomes din. Bakit ba tayo nagpo-post-treatment na, uh, follow-up? No? It's because um, we also assign or define up outcomes of post-treatment follow-up para malaman natin if is this a non-relapsing cure? Meaning, cured na ba talaga ito? Walang relapse. Or, nagkaroon na relapse. Okay. So, we have ano, the non-relapsing cure, meaning, uh, successfully treated individual, whether yung mga na-assigned tinacured or um, treatment completed, nag-remain siya culture negative within 6 to 12 months post treatment so, nakadepende yun doon sa result ng ating BSSM and culture. And then, pwede rin tayong may post-treatment follow-up relapse. Meaning, pag-check ulit ng chest x-ray, ng BSM niya ng culture after 6 to 12 months, nakitaan na natin ng recurrent TB disease. So, nagkaroon, nag, kumbaga, nag-reversion, nag-revert back naging culture positive again within 6 to 12 months after na ha? after niya na cure or nakapagtapos ng treatment. Yeah. So next um died. So meron ding died na post treatment outcome for patients who were previously cured or treatment completed during that 12 months postpartum. Okay? Sige. Um, loss to follow up. Loss to follow up. Um, yung loss to follow up naman after treatment, ito yung mga patients who had outcome recorded but cannot be traced in the 12 months following treatment outcome. So, kumbaga, scheduled niya na for treatment uh, follow up kaso hindi siya nagpakita after 6 to 12 months. So, hindi niyo na hindi niyo malaman kung Ano ba ito? Nag-revert back ba? Okay lang ba si patient? So, you assign these laws to follow up. Um, then now, um, pwede na natin i-record ang outcome of the patient sa kanyang post-treatment follow-up. So, I think that's the end of my presentation. And it's time for you to do some uh, mental exercise on the different BRTB cases that we have prepared for you. So, para hindi nyo makalimutan, no, yung, yung lecture for the part 1 and part 2, um, hopefully, you will practice um, the exercises para at least medyo alam nyo how the lecture, the theoretical, will fit into real, um, real patient situations. Okay? So, I hope you enjoy and we will see you during the um, rationale. So thank you and good day to everyone.